Now that we are approaching 2024, there are a lot of people who are going to take interest in their health and in their fitness. So I thought it would be fun to sit down with my friend and partner, Rob Jacobs, to talk all about these mistakes that people make around this time of year and looking into the new year. So stay tuned. Welcome back. My name is Sarah. This is the Sarah Kleiner Wellness YouTube channel, and I'm also broadcasting this on the Evolving Wellness Podcast. And today I have my friend and returning guest, Rob Jacobs, back on the show to talk about these mistakes that people commonly make towards the beginning of the year. And some of these might sound really familiar to you. So I know you're going to get a lot of great value out of this conversation. I wanted to let you know a couple of quick things. Rob has an amazing membership group that he has just started. I'm going to link that in the show notes for you. And then Rob and I are also going to run a 30% off of our exercise program for the month of December only. So if you missed it during all the Black Friday holiday madness, you can still grab that exercise course for 30% off using the special link that will be down in the show notes if you're listening on audio only. If you're on YouTube, it'll be in that information section. So make sure to check that out if you really do enjoy a lot of what Rob and I are saying. We have an entire course that's going to help you get off on the right foot in 2024. So much wonderful wisdom there. So I hope you enjoy the episode. And before we jump into it, I want to thank a couple of sponsors. The first one is Viva Rays. They're my go-to source for protecting my circadian rhythm with their circadian glasses. They also have great eye masks, great earplugs. So all the things to help keep you circadian friendly and sleeping well, low EMF headphones. Great Christmas gifts if you are shopping right now. Second one is Upgraded Formulas. They are my go-to source for mineral balance. And I love their special magnesium formula. It actually can bypass the gut. So use my code YOGI12 or YOGI if you've already used that one before. Check out Upgraded Formulas linked in the show notes. And let's jump into this show with Rob. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I have a friend and returning guest, Rob, here with me. We're going to talk about some major mistakes people make as they roll up on the New Year's resolutions, end of the year. So, Rob, thank you for being back on the show again. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's a fun yeah. topic. <laughs> it is fun. And, you know, my talks with you, people really like these. They, they're my most popular episodes. So I'm sure we'll have some interesting dialogue today. Uh, awesome. But I did want to mention before we kind of start that you and I are going to offer a promo on the exercise course that we did this year that's been really fantastic for a lot of people. And um, we're going to offer that just this month for 30% off. So if you're listening or watching this in the month of December, you can take advantage of that. Um, and we'll have a link down in the show notes for you. But yeah, let's uh, let's talk about some of these big mistakes. What's the first one that comes to your mind? Oh geez, I think the uh, I think the like the cleanse detox mm. thing is uh, is probably the the biggest offender. Um, and really, you know, we can we can simplify detox in sort of mm -hmm. like it's protein dependent or uh, mm -hmm. amino acid dependent, I should say. And you look at a lot of these like popular things there's different ways to, to cleanse, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, there's even a, there's even a very low protein one that I'll use, but it's not for the same purpose of detoxification, right? It's, mm -hmm. you know, I got a bodybuilder who eats massive quantities of protein, 365, 24, seven, it behooves that person for a week or two, every three to six months to just eat a lot of vegetables and less meat. Yeah. Um, you know, it's more of a like yeah. digestive processing. Give your body a break kind of a deal, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. not this, this week long cure, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and and the other thing, like the, it's such a, such an awful trap that, that people get, get into, or you know, they get sucked into, unfortunately, by the marketing. It's like, and the, when people do those, these just default cleanses, they don't stick. The results don't yeah. stick because- mm -hmm it's the stuff is just not effective. You lose mm -hmm. water weight, you lose, you know, you may, you may lose some actual body fat, but it comes back on because you're not actually changing anything. And when you, mm -hmm. when you abide by the like circadian principles and all, all the stuff that, 
that we both talk about so much, you're changing your lifestyle. You're not just yeah. doing something. You're just not eating short term. <laughs> yeah. You're just not, not eating crappy food for a week right. and dropping some excess weight right. that you put back on when you, you know, start having your cereal again in three weeks. Right. Yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of like the parasite cleanses and all these like crazy detox protocols. And I see people, I'm sure you do too, actually getting really sick from these because it's just like, it, it's too much for the body to just try to push all this stuff out. And it's actually taking a lot of good stuff with it. What, what are your <laughs> thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's like, there's so many of them now, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like we are saying, it's just for, for informational purposes, if someone tries to right. sell you a detox, if there's not a large protein component to it, it is not a detox system, right? You, you may lose weight, but you're not losing it because your liver is working better because yeah. of the cayenne pepper and the lemon juice or whatever it is, right? Like <laughs> you're just not eating solid food for, exactly. for five to 10 days. Of course, you're going to lose weight, like just fast. Right. Um, so yeah, so all that stuff, like, and there's so many people selling those things now. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. They try to make everyone think it's right for them, right? Like, well, you- right. We've all got parasites. We all, we all do vitamin D. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, it's one of those things where they try to push that crap on everyone. Mm -hmm. It's like, you probably don't need that, you know, like yeah. maybe a little less junk food, eat a little mm -hmm. more healthy food, see a sunrise for a change and your detoxification systems actually do work better. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just astounding to me that the number of people I'm kind of reflecting on 2023 and just the kind of, I get a lot of testimonials this time of year because people are like reflecting on their year and the good things that have happened. And, you know, just this morning, I had a woman in my private group that was like, you know, I was told by doctors, the only thing I was ever going to be able to do was IVF. I was never going to get pregnant naturally. I tried for eight years. I did Sarah's protocols, her leptin cores, all the stuff that she talks about with the circadian principles and I'm pregnant, 25 weeks pregnant with twins. Never thought that would ever happen. Totally natural. And it's like the simple things that we talk about, it's just like, no, that's too easy. I don't, it's like not really wanting to put in the work, but that's what this woman did. She put in the work and did these really simple things. And now she's got, you know, really healthy, amazing pregnancy, two babies on the way after suffering for eight years and doing all these like cleanses and detox, you know, just going through right. the ringer and it's, it's. It's frustrating. I know it's frustrating to you because I remember when I was training with you um, and I was like, I'm doing a vegan cleanse. And you were just like, <laughs> why? <laughs> like, because I was dealing with like, you know, I was going to yoga at 5 a.m. every day. I was pushing my body to the max. And I kind of had this like, I have to do this vegan cleanse and do this crazy workout because I've gained weight because I my, my body was having a major cortisol issue. And what did the vegan cleanse do? It pushed me to the point where I couldn't even work out. Like I had to stop for a while because I just got, I messed me up so bad. And so I think that is something that probably happens more often than it gets talked about. Yeah. There's like, there's so much like rebound or, or, yep. or repercussions to these things that nobody ever talks about because, you know, the person who got you to do that crap to begin with is certainly not going to. <laughs> not no, gonna tell not you gonna how admit that it was an issue for. right yeah and i mean we see this a lot is like so many people especially in the training world right there's so many bad systems of training mm -hmm. that have a good reputation mm -hmm. because they came from like the communist countries right and they just like everybody did it and mm -hmm. i mean I've, I've stopped me if i've told you this before but like, i asked one of these guys once at a conference like with one of the the guys from the soviet union researchers like how did you guys come up with some of this stuff he said we had a lot of bodies yeah right and, and you know what gets popular it, it like it's just like you throw a bunch of stuff on the wall and whatever sticks must be the right recipe but it only mm -hmm. worked for you know a handful of people like right. so for for a training example because i think this helped people make sense of this the same guy that i spoke to went from the soviet union to coach the cuban team right because they're all communists and all that stuff and he couldn't do the same stuff with the Cubans that he could do with the Soviet Union because the drug protocols were extremely different and it was different people, different population, different body type, like different everything, right? And they, they couldn't do what was so scientifically effective 
that the the Soviet Union did with the Cubans because it just wouldn't work. And everything is like that. Nutrition is like that. Training is like that. Yeah, like it's just, it's all like that. And so many people want to want to default to a five day cleanse where they don't have to do anything different other than drink the stupid shake for breakfast, as opposed to not using your technology, you know, going to bed early, blue blockers, like instead of changing your lifestyle and getting a lasting result, like it, it's, that's the, the extremely frustrating part is everybody's looking for the quick fix or like, you know, I say all the time, stepping over hundred dollar bills to pick up nickels. It's just not a, it's, it's the worst part about the new year is the, is the, is the cleanse. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I mean, those things sell. So people are making a lot of money off of these. And, you know, there's so much fear. I've had to unfollow so many accounts this year just <laughs> because there's so much fear out there about this stuff and like, oh, you're toxic and this, that, and the other, and we're all toxic. And it's like, the crazy thing is that if you really actually start to do these, you know, circadian principles and do some grounding maybe some red light therapy, a little bit of cold therapy, your detox pathways open, your circulation improves. All this stuff can actually improve without you, you know, without you spending. And there are some cases where, you know, that a detox can be helpful, but it shouldn't be the first thing that you do. You know, it shouldn't be like, okay, I'm going to do this first. You got to put in the work first. And I think that's like the hard thing for people is they, they are searching for that the quick fix and it just yeah. unfortunately doesn't exist <laughs> exactly like that that stuff can move the needle and is relevant for some people like if you do a, an actual you know protein dependent detoxification process but it you know if you think about it like a computer or the iphones like we've talked about before with some of these analogies like if mm -hmm. if the internal workings of the of the machinery aren't working properly doesn't matter how shiny you make the outside or like the apps that you download, if if the stuff on the inside isn't functioning the phone or the computer properly, none of it is going to work well for a lasting amount of time. It's all, it's going to break down. It's going to continue to bog down. So just change your lifestyle. Like don't get sucked into all that stuff. Do the easy stuff. Like it, it's mm -hmm. actually very inexpensive to turn your television off and put your phone down. <laughs> like that yeah. costs you very little money. It costs you time, but you get all discipline. that. Discipline. Exactly. Yeah. You, you get so much of that stuff back that that pays itself forward in so many other aspects of parenting and life and training and your job and, and so many other things, but people just don't want to do it because it's challenging. You know, it's too, or it's too challenging, too hard. Right. Exactly. You know, and speaking of, I feel like one mistake I see people make, I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier with my own experience. And I know we've talked about this in previous episodes, but the person who is already overstressed and over busy and they want to start working out. And so they decide, Hey, come the new year, I'm going to start going to the gym at 5.00 AM. Um, and I know you've trained a good amount of those people as well. Uh, what, how, how do you talk around that? Or how can you help that person who is just hell bent on doing that? Or maybe we can talk about why they don't want to do that first. So training is, is a stressor, right? There is two mm -hmm. different kinds of stress, or maybe even more than that now, but used to, we used to look at it as you stress and distress, right? You stress mm -hmm. is something like training or yoga, where it is a stressful stimulus to the body that leads to a positive outcome. Whereas like distress is, you know, emails mm -hmm. and phone calls and bad, annoying bosses and, you know, life stress, right? Things that don't lead to positive outcomes. So yeah. if your bucket is overflowing with distress, you stress does not lead to those positive outcomes, right? You, the whole point with, with training adaptations is it's the recovery stimulus from the training that you're doing that makes you better, right? But mm -hmm. if you're, if all your resources are spent trying to recover from, from distressful types of things, from work stress, from life stress, from whatever it is, then you will not simply just won't be able to recover from the training and you'll end up spinning your wheels and, and oftentimes digging yourself a deeper hole. Like I, I can't tell you how many times people have stalled on weight loss and I've had to tell them to do less yeah. to increase their results, 
Like these are competitors. These aren't elite Olympians. These are overweight, average Joes, average gals who are doing too much that need to do less so you can recover, right? Mm -hmm. One of my old coaches always said growth happens at the rate of restoration. And it's the same concept with fat loss, with anything. If you can't recover, you will not progress. So give yourself permission to do less. Like you, you should, if you, (laughs) it's really that simple. And, you know, a lot of people, if you have to go to the gym, there's ways where you can be productive doing less, right? Mm -hmm. Like one of the things I've done is train more often, but way less time. You know, I used to train four to four times a week, basically, or four times every seven days, sometimes twice a day. But those work out, like I would be in the process of training, warm up and everything for about 90 minutes. Now, everything takes about 40. Mm -hmm. Warm up, prep, cool down, all that stuff, you know, 20 to 40 minutes in and out. So I train more often because I'm not training the same amount of hard, right? It's easier to recover from when you only train 30, 20, 30 minutes. So to be, to hit certain kind of goals, you do have to train more often. Mm-hmm. But that's another one of the things that people I don't think think about in terms of like they they get stuck in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, mm-hmm. Saturday, they get stuck in the days of the week schedule and not just a like a repetitive training schedule where if you train less, slightly less, uh, slightly less hard, right, or less intense, you can then train more often or you didn't need to train more often. But mm-hmm. that, you know, that that tends to actually work really well in time schedules too. Like, all right, I got a half hour. You can be extremely productive in a half hour if you do it the right way and not go in there and mess around, spend half the time on the phone or on the cardio equipment, you know, go in, train, get in, get out, get jacked. That's what I always say. And then you're done. Right. And putting those pieces together. So there's, there's lots of, there's lots of ways, lots of ways to skin the cat, lots of ways to get these results that don't require you to go in the gym and just like have a soul crushing workout. Right. I think that's what people think it's all or nothing. And if they don't like completely wreck their body every single time, they didn't actually work out. It wasn't worth it. And so it's kind of this like all or nothing mentality has to be at 5 a.m., has to be super hard. I have to be suffering or I'm not going to make progress. And I think that's one of the things we really go over in our exercise course is like, you know, here is different ways that you can train your body and actually get results. Like there, there's a lot of different techniques that people can use. And we, we go over that and have different programs that people can, can look at. And I think that the people just need to like, no, it doesn't have to be some crazy, like throw up at the end type of <laughs> deal to, for it to allow your body to make progress at all. Yeah. There, so there's, there's lots of different ways to do it. Right. So like, again, it, I went from four days to six days, right. Mm-hmm. And Again, 90 minutes down to 20 to 30, even Mm -hmm. rarely takes longer than 40 minutes. And that's one of the things like, okay, you go from a three minute rest to a 15 second rest. Well, now, if you're only resting 15 seconds, that's a very different style of workout, right? Mm -hmm. Very different. Now it's a bit more aerobic. You're still lifting weights. And this is one of the things we talk about in the course, right? Is a, like a strength coach's approach to fat loss is not yes. running and hamster no. cardio, cardio, elliptical, fasted cardio, all that. Yeah. Yeah. And so by, by utilizing resistance training aerobically for fat loss, you actually do build strength and build muscle and lose fat all at the same time. Now those mm-hmm. things happen at different rates, depending on all the variables that you can manipulate. Right. But mm-hmm. yes, you can burn fat and build muscle all at the same time depending on how you, how you choose to do it and how you utilize your resources. And right. one of the, one of the things that, especially like some of the, the mom, like the busy moms yes, that is very hard to get them to understand is it, it start thinking about recovery from exercise uh, in, in terms of like a budget. You only have so many recovery dollars that you can spend to recover from, from life, to recover from any mm-hmm. stimulus, right? So you have to put all of those things in one basket. If, if you're, uh, home life is falling apart because of an illness or because of any, anything that's going on, right? Somebody gets sick. You have to take care of them. Like I'm Mm -hmm. got some of that going on in my own life, right? It Mm -hmm. gets, you have to shift those resources because now you've got mental stress and other forms of distress coming in that are going to change how many dollars you can invest in recovery. So exactly four soul crushing workouts a week may need to change to three 
moderate paced workouts for a couple of weeks until the situation changes or things resolve, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's a, it, it does make it complicated because there are so many variables, but it, mm -hmm. it is also pretty simple, you know, in, in terms of starting to think about that budget, right? Like you mixing and matching your stimulus as well, right? That's one of the, the other things I have a very hard time again with like busy moms as, as mm -hmm. are often the culprits because they, yeah. They feel like they have to do certain things because that's what mm -hmm. everyone says. It's like, well, <laughs> so, <Don't> really. <laughs> so, so if we look at the leanest people on earth, right, it is the usually the people that are stepping on stage. Mm -hmm. Cardiovascular work is a very small component to their training. They don't do yeah. hit boot camps. They don't do all the other nonsense. Like when they do cardio, it is a walking pace to burn a minute percentage of fat that moves the needle for them because they're stepping on stage. Right. So if you don't have five hours a day to train and be an influencer or a fit fluencer or whatever they are, like the biggest bang for your buck is some sort of resistance training mm -hmm. almost always. Yeah. Sometimes the biggest bang for your buck is not training in any way. It's just resting and recovering. Like it's okay to take three days off, to take a week off, mm -hmm. give yourself permission to do that. So then you can, because no matter what your training goal is, even if you're not training, you know, pedal to the metal if you're not training optimally which is you know a hard mentally focused effort then you're not doing well you right. just like going in and not having a productive workout or a challenging workout which can be different forms of challenging like you're better off not training and that's it's hard to get the athletes to learn that. And it's, you know, it's as just as hard to get the moms to learn that or the dads. It's very learn. hard. Yeah. Cause you feel, you feel like you're failing if you take that time off, if you rest. And that's been a big lesson for me this year with a lot of family stress and taking care of others and having a really, you know, a lot of issues with my daughter is just like, Hey, it's not a, I have a, a nice ass cold plunge and a nice sauna. I invested a lot of money in these things, but it's not appropriate for me to go jump in cold water and do immersion right now because my stress has been so high. And it's like, maybe the time is better spent in front of a red light panel or do it, you know, doing something restorative. If I have a free moment instead of doing the cold water immersion and it's, you have to, you get to a point where you have to learn that because you, like you said, you only have so much in the bank and you can't spend, keep, spending it you're going to go into the negatives and when it comes to your health going into the negatives is not a good thing because that means you're sick you know and it could be a cold it could be flu or it could be something really way worse you know I, the amount of women that have come to me with autoimmune disorders just continues to skyrocket thyroid and autoimmune thyroid and autoimmune and it's like <laughs> there's a personality with each of these women and I might ruffle some feathers from saying this, but they, a lot of them fit a personality of putting everybody else first, putting, you know, themselves last on the list, being a people pleaser, never speaking their mind, not, you know, like never just kind of holding things in. And then it's like, yeah, why is my body attacking itself? Right. It, it there's, there's that emotional component as well as just kind of running yourself into the ground physically that I think it just kind of is a culmination and it just, you know, and there's other environmental factors I think at play as well and dietary factors, but that is the biggest common thread that I see um, with these women. And it's hard to get them to, to prioritize sunrise. You know, I had a woman who's like, why is my thyroid not correcting itself? I'm like, well, how's your sunrise routine? Well, I spend two minutes in the sunrise and then I build it that I'm like, that's not gonna be enough. You know, like it's, it's a hard conversation to have with people. It's like, you, you gotta put more time into it, you know, but especially with something like that, like that, that can be so restorative mm -hmm. in addition to being one of those you stress types of things that is mm -hmm. like, yes, it's restorative, but it's also, you know, anabolic and productive to, mm -hmm. to do those things. Everything will work better when you get those thing, those pieces in place. And that's mm -hmm. like, really where you need to start. Cause the, for me, like the most liberating thing I ever did like 15 or 20 years ago was at least in terms of my own training progress was like, nothing was more important to my day than my 90 to 90 minutes to two hours of training. Like mm -hmm. 
that time has been blocked on my schedule for over 10 years now where I don't care what's happening. That's my training time. This is my routine. And that's how it's getting done. Mm-hmm. You know, and you can do that if you budget things properly. Like you can, you can make that happen at lunchtime, in the early yeah. afternoon, in the evening, and not at four, five, six a.m. Yeah. When your if body you- needs to be slowly <laughs> waking up, especially in the winter time. That's the hard thing for people. It's like during the winter time, it's still dark outside. That means your ass needs to still be in bed or like ch- taking it easy and not like yeah. running, 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 sip, drinking coffee, going, going, going. I get it. Like I've got a very high needs daughter that has made me miss a lot of sleep in the last few months, a lot of sleep I've missed, but you know what? I still wear blue blockers. I still get outside. You know, I still do the things that I know I need to do to keep my health intact. Um, cause I get it, you know, I get it. You can't just be the person that stays in bed until sunrise. That's not going to be <laughs> feasible for a lot of people, <laughs> but you getting up, you know, this, get in going to the gym at five o'clock in the morning under all those fluorescent lights and just busting your butt is not sustainable if you already have a lot of stress going on in your life and it's it's going to burn you out like that's the thing about stress and that's what we talk about a lot in our course is just like yeah it's you can't overdo the stress it's more is not always better and that's a very kind of american way of looking at things everything has to be more better you know, more cold plunging, more hit, more this. And it's like, no, that the body just doesn't work that way, especially as we get older, you know, mm-hmm. and we have, we talk a lot about hormones. Maybe we can briefly talk about hormones here, but like hormones in our training program, because as you get older, as a woman, the ovaries start to say, Hey, we're going to just start doing less and less. Cause that's just going to happen for every woman and your adrenals begin to take over. And so that's, cortisol stress, you're just a lot more vulnerable to running into issues with those things. So maybe we can talk a little bit about hormones and exercise uh, for people, just brief roundup. Yeah. So, I mean, like one of the important things that I I do want to point out, just, I've been in the game a long time now yeah. and you, you hear, especially in the fitness industry is like, oh, the, you know, I get up at 3 a.m. So I can oh, yeah. be- my most productive the and best. when everyone else is asleep and what you find right as someone who's been in this for a while, those people, the people that were saying that 10 years ago, aren't around anymore to say that now, I mean, not that they're dead, but they aren't, <laughs> they aren't influential enough. Their physiques aren't money-making enough to still be around, right? Like those, yeah. those people don't last. And so the people that are saying that now, are not going to be saying that five or 10 years from now. And I think one of the very, very, very important things for like just the average person to understand about the fit people they see on social media Mm -hmm. is that 90%, and that's being very generous, are on drugs and are assisted with some form of drugs. So glad you're saying that. (laughs) 15 to 20 years ago, that wasn't the case because it wasn't easy to get. Right. And, it wasn't oh, as competitive and it wasn't as easy to get. Right. Yeah. It, it wasn't as competitive all kinds of peptides and all kinds of crap because the, yeah. 20 years ago, the only people that made money on their physiques were competitive bodybuilders or bikini people. Right mm-hmm. now you see people making money on their physiques off social media that don't yep. compete, whose health doesn't matter. And, right. you know, guess what? A lot of them are dropping dead now. <laughs> like it's a problem. Bodybuilders no, are dying. Yeah, I've seen that. Young Influencers people too. are dying. Young yes. people. Yeah. People on these drugs, unsupervised, doing their own thing, like are mm-hmm. dying, right? Because the, the, yeah. the difference between someone taking a, a TRT dose of testosterone versus a bodybuilder or competitive strongman's verse of test, dose of testosterone is monumentally different, mm. monumentally different or any other hormones for that matter, right? So uh, that is a, such an important thing i think people need to get like men seeing other men who are just mm-hmm. yoked and like oh i have 4 a.m productive i get my workout in and i'm all talk to me in ten- juice is you on. <laughs> yeah like, like talk to me in 10 years let's see where you are and, right. and so i'm very interested in your drug protocol to see 
uh, to see what you're doing that I'm not doing, right? Because mm-hmm. that's, they don't tell you that. And great. I hope you are enjoying this episode with my friend, Rob Jacobs. Now a quick little reminder, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the like button and leave us a comment, a kind one. (laughs) If you're on the audio only podcast, I would really, really would appreciate it. If you would head on over to Apple or to Spotify, leave us up to a five-star review. It will help to get the show out to more people. I really want to continue to spread this message well into the new year about health, about fitness. And speaking of which, if anything that Rob and I are saying here in this episode is resonating with you and you really are ready to get more help with your exercise, check out our exercise program. It is 30% off. This is the lowest that we have ever put the course down on discount. So if you want to check that out, that will also be linked in the show notes. And then you can also check out Rob's private membership group, If you are looking to get more one-on-one help or coaching from Rob, it's a really great place to start. He puts out some really, really amazing information. All right, let's jump back into the show. It is like an exceptional physique is exceptional most of the time because of drugs. Now, there are a lot of exceptional physiques that are 100% natural, but you can absolutely tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely tell the difference. Once you know like what to start looking for, because there's a difference in like, uh, a female on Instagram, for example, being in incredible shape, mm-hmm. having, you know, six or eight abs visible, the, the mm-hmm. linea alba crease in the middle, you know, and being very lean versus someone who is just like, you know, Charles used to say dick skin lean, mm-hmm. everywhere, right? Like that's, that's not healthy all mm-hmm. year long. And that's one of the reasons mm-hmm. these people are so messed up, right? Like the, mm-hmm. the fit influencer has to be that lean all year long or they can't sell their crap. Right. And you won't use their codes and all that other shit. Right. 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 And it's the same for the, for the men. And because 15, 20 years ago, these people didn't have a voice. Right. Right. The only people who had voices in the late nineties, early two thousands were successful people who were successful training other people to look that way. Now yeah. it's like, all right, you can take drugs and listen to some, some other influencer and take this mm-hmm. crazy drug regimen. And if you don't die, you're going to have a great physique until you do. Right. Right. And the women on social media, it's like, you not only have you got like the Botox and the fillers and all this stuff, like it, it's insane. And that's, you know, I've talked about it with other people of like how it's terrible for your body to inject those types of poisons in there. It's hard. I'm 44. Like I definitely have some aging happening and I have to just be okay with it. Yeah. Um, but that's, it, it's, you, what you see on social media is not real and you can get anything now like the, these, uh, peptides, right? Like, and so, sometimes I think they can be helpful. Like the GLPs, I think they can be helpful for people. I'm not, I've kind of changed my tune a little bit on some of these. Um, but you don't know what your influencer who's got this physique she's showing off all the time. If she's taking, uh, a GLP, like one, like she, 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 it's, she might be right. And she's showing you what she's eating or not eating. And like you, it's all smoke and mirrors for, for a lot of people. And so that comparison game can be tough. You know, (laughs) it's don't, don't fall into that trap of comparing yourself. I don't show all the hard stuff that's going on in my life. I don't talk about when I have a bad day. Cause it's like, it's really personal. Right. And, 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 I just don't want to put myself out there like that anymore. So yeah, yeah, it's what you see is not always what you're getting. And when it comes to hormones and, you know, training, like you said, (laughs) a lot of people are probably enhanced, right? I I mean, I would, 90% is a generous number to say that 90% are enhanced. I think that gives you, t- you know, roughly 10%. I think it's more than that on, on for at least the popular ones mm-hmm. because they have to look that way to be mm-hmm. like popular, right? Like, uh, yeah. so another really good way that you can sort of gauge some of this, right. Is by, if you look at Olympians mm-hmm. who are obnoxiously drug tested, mm-hmm. The vast majority of the leanest and most in shape looking Olympic athletes, no matter what your sport is, the weightlifters, the sprinters, right, are are probably the most muscular or the most lean, I would say, depending on the weight class of the weightlifter. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you look at the most lean of them versus your your most lean non-competitive fit fluencer, 
those physiques are massively different, right? Mm -hmm. Like you look oh, at, yeah. a, at an elite hundred meter female sprinter and you'd be like, wow, that's an incredible physique. You put that, that same female sprinter next to half of these fitfluencer people that are mm -hmm. on, on drugs. You look at their physiques, you're like, wow, okay. That's the difference. Difference. Yeah, you can <laughs> right? see it. the... it's not like <laughs> as aesthetic, you know, is this person who's, yeah, doing a lot of unnatural things uh, for their body. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the sad part is that like, it doesn't last. Right. And, and, and no. one of the, I think one of the telltale signs too is, is uh, with, with male bodybuilders, right. Like Arnold and most of the guys that competed in Arnold's generation are still alive. Most of them, mm -hmm. they're not all are, but you know, some of them have died because now they're, they're starting to be in their eighties and their late seventies. Right. Right. They're just uh, getting older. But the bodybuilders that look like today's bodybuilder are not going to make it to the seventies and the eighties uh, though. Mm -hmm. And the ones that do the ones that are getting off of all their crap are like hundreds of pounds lighter. <laughs> I mean, like there's, yep. there's one in particular that has a very intelligent podcast who was a massive, you know, very drug using bodybuilder anabolics using bodybuilder. And now he's like a fraction of his size. He's still, mm. I mean, if you look at them side by side, you'd be like, does this guy well, have cancer? <laughs> it's like, what happened to this dude? Um, you know, but I mean, now yeah. he's just like a very fit looking male. He's just, I mean, he just by all yeah. average standards, he's got an incredible physique currently, but compared to what he was 10 years ago, you know, I mean, like I, I met this dude in person. I took his body fat readings once, like he's mm. 50 to hundred pounds lighter. Um, mm. So I, that's an important thing to understand with these standards. Like when you're, you're, you're seeing all these people that are, it's just like it's just not feasible to to no. buy their crap mm -mm, mm -mm. like it's, it's just not mm -mm. no it's not at all it's i mean that's why i like to just put up testimonials of everyday people that are doing my stuff rather than make myself the example all the time yeah i show a little midriff every now and then you know <laughs> to let people know it's possible to do this uh and maintain health year round but i'm by no means, like I've had people comment on my reels, see a natural looking person. <laughs> like she has a little <laughs> bit of a belly. Yeah. I don't have a six pack, but I'm not, you know, like I, this is the best I've ever looked. And it's because I'm just super consistent, you know, and I don't eat perfectly. I don't have this perfect diet. I'm not carnivore. I'm not keto. I'm not like, I, I don't have like a specific, like a perfect diet all the time. And I think maybe that's, a mistake people make is either going too much one way or too much the other way. Most people are too, like you say, eating like assholes, right? Like just yeah. crap, you know, that's a big problem. But my listeners, my community, I feel like full of people who, because I did the carnivore thing so strictly for a while, they adhere to carnivore keto and they won't deviate from that in any way, shape or form. And I find that that can be just as big of a mistake, not just as big of a mistake, honestly, but it can be detrimental, you know, probably not to the degree of somebody eating like a quote unquote <laughs> asshole, but also it can be detrimental and cause people to, um, to run into issues. Do you see that, uh, oh, in tremendous. training and coaching people? Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about that a little bit. So, yeah. So I'll use the last competitive bodybuilder I had as a great example. We, we were, he had been training for a few months. I was kind of advising him and then it was like, well, everything I was telling him was way better. So let me, let me take over finally. So we get, um, I want to say about six weeks away from showtime. Right. And you can imagine this is a high protein, uh, because he was my client. Now it was a very high mm -hmm. fat cyclical carbohydrate feedings, right? Lots of protein, mm -hmm. 200 grams a day plus. And we get to a point where the body composition steady decrease starts to plateau a little. Mm. All right, we're going to three days, no meat, only salads. Uh, he had an egg and a dairy intolerance. So normally I would say no meat, but we're going to eat a lot of eggs to make up for the yep, protein. protein. But we went like three salads a day, as many vegetables as you can comfortably eat and, and amino acids because amino acids are very easy to digest. I know that's a supplement. Supplements are the worst, but you know, believe it or not, some of them actually are helpful at the right times when you need them. Uh, yeah. And after the three days of that, our body fat percentage dropped four to 6%. I can't remember exactly what it was. Three days, right? And yeah. uh, 
we did the measurements for lean mass and all these other things. None of them changed, right? Because uh, like people in my shoes used to think if I don't eat this much protein for a day, then I'm you're going to start lose a bunch of muscle. muscle. Yeah. 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 So that is like, that's an appropriate thing for, for everyone, right? Like changing, mm-hmm. um, you know, like I was saying with the, the intestinal restoration diet mm-hmm. is probably the best way to say it is people eating two, 250 grams of protein every day. Oh yeah. You don't do that for a week, make up some lost ground with some vegetables and some non acidic things, right. To, to mm-hmm. help re, um, rebalance pH and realkalize things mm-hmm. in the gut that need to be realkaline. Believe it or not, that'll actually increase uh, HCL, which improves digestion, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. All these little things for a week, every three to six months or so every once in a while, some of the things we talked about in the course, it makes a huge difference. You know, like if mm-hmm. you feel on carnivore, that's fantastic, but it would right. be who, to probably eat a little bit differently every once in a while. And then yeah. do what feels great because you are missing certain things. Mm-hmm. You, you just yeah. are. That's a hard and conversation it, to have because there's so many carnivore influencers now that are like, I have cured this, that, and the other, and I'm fabulous. And again, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Number <laughs> one, you do not. Um, and number two, I get the, I get the, the backfill of these people who do the carnivore, yes. don't take any breaks from it and start having unwanted weight gain, trouble sleeping, just, you know, nutrient issues. And it's like, yeah, that, I mean, and I did, I, I mean, I come out and talked about it a couple of years ago when I, you know, and everyone's like, Oh, you did carnivore to get pregnant. I'm like, no, I absolutely did not. I actually had to stop doing <laughs> carnivore to get pregnant. And I did not do carnivore during pregnancy. Like, no, absolutely not. So I think that there's just you again, it's more, it's that more is better, harder, faster, you know, push yourself to the max type of a deal. And even now, like I will have, like I'll every now and then have a meal that has some stuff in it that's like oh you know didn't you watch paul saladino's reel about that (laughs) yeah i did and um guess what after i ate this horrible thing uh i dropped five pounds right and my sleep improved you know i start actually like it it was like a, a stressor on my body that was a good stressor and so we demonize a lot of stuff, but sometimes every now and then it can be like a, like a stressor. Like I remember when you were training me and you were like, I was like, I need a meal plan. Give me the meal plan. Tell me exactly what to eat. And you're like, look, (laughs) you gave me a structure. And then you're like, after, you know, three days, try three days, then try eating some like chips and salsa or, you know, eating something that's like off a little bit. And see how that makes you feel like once you start to have that kind of depleted feeling and I was like no that's never going to work I'm not going to do that you know like so I just stuck to the meal plan that you gave me I never had the days where I really deviated and then what ended up happening I started getting more inflamed after about a month you know and so sometimes I think taking a break from these diets and doing some different things can actually be helpful for people yeah so I had uh, a a client who I work with like every six months or so was sticking to the meal plan that, mm-hmm. that I offer with her when we first started, which was training and nutrition together. And she had mm-hmm. some questions like, oh, my, my fat loss kind of plateaued. Like, you know, when I, when I stopped working with you a few months ago, it's like, well, you can't eat like this and not train like this. Right. Like this is, this is nutrition that specifically mm-hmm. goes along with, with a certain the training. Of like yep. there's a, a, a Dr. Baker, right. Is, is very, mm-hmm. popular, very jacked. Now, we don't know what else he's doing to be that jacked, not saying anything, but, you know, if you go back to my 90% rule, the odds are are in favor of that. But, uh, you know, I, I've seen him cite one of my biggest training and nutrition influences. And again, Dr. Baker trains very hard to look that very way. Very hard. He might he do other things that he doesn't tell you about, whatever those are, who knows, right? So, like, I mean, it's like you just said, we get all the people that are broken, from doing these yes. things. We yep. get to see everyone when it stops yep. working. Yeah. And like one of the best things is is the balance of some of these things. And I don't mean, yep. you know, like when I see ugh, I had a I consulted with a guy for the dolphins. Uh he, he needed to drop X amount of body fat and he'd get paid a little more for, you know, whatever, right? Mm. And you see the meal plan provided by the RD. 
and it's like oats and like it was a, a balanced me meal at every meal and it wasn't helping this kid get leaner because that's not what he needed but but it's also the same sort of thing where there are when you start to look at the circadian timing of the, some of the stuff we go over in the course like you can do keto and like somewhat vegetarian and somewhat carnivore every day at different times of day, because each one of those things is somewhat required depending on where you live and where, what time of year it is. And that's a great balanced structure, right? Like you don't, you don't need tons of carbs before you go to sleep because carbs are energy. No. Right. You don't need lots of energy to go to bed. You right. need that lunchtime ish when you're trying to be active. Right. And, and the mm -hmm. same sort of thing with like fat. Fat is sustainable energy. When do you need the longest lasting energy? Well, it's probably in the morning. Right. You don't digest protein really well in a stressed state. But when is your cortisol the highest? When should it be the highest? Well, in yeah. the morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you might digest protein better, not at breakfast. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have any protein. But if you're going to eat a carnivore meal or, or a lot of protein, you might get more out of less protein, not having it for breakfast, not having it for lunch, but maybe having it for dinner. Right. This protein's restorative. It is is a recovery substrate. It's not an energy mm -hmm. substrate. Even if that's all you're eating, right. it takes a lot of work to turn protein and meat into glucose. It's not mm -hmm. efficient. There's a reason your body doesn't do that by default. Right. <laughs> right? Like, like we always say there's ketogenic amino acids and there's glucogenic amino acids. Yes, but those aren't top of the list for what protein is supposed to be used for. Mm -hmm. So you have all of those components. Whereas if you just wouldn't be dogmatic about everything, right, you're gonna probably get better, longer lasting results, and and feel better and function better. Right. Yeah, the protein thing is another more is better type of deal. When people start looking at some of my leptin work, and I'm like, no, really, like depending on how tall you are, if you're male or female probably be fine with between twenty and thirty grams at breakfast. You don't need to go forty, fifty, sixty grams of protein at breakfast, unless you're a very active male with a ton of muscle on your body. Like I've seen women try to do the 40, 50 grams of protein at breakfast and have these ridiculous energy crashes and feel like crap. Like, why do I feel like crap? I'm doing the high protein. I'm like, it's too, that's too much, you know? And so there's a Goldilocks amount for people. And I think you kind of have to figure out what your, you know, my sweet spot is like 25 grams of protein at breakfast. I'm also five foot seven, you know, and, and, and I'm not like a tiny little person. So that's a good amount for me. I have some people yeah. 25 grams of, you know, four foot 11, might be a little much go down to like 20 grams. You got to kind of play with that. And that's the hard thing for people is they want, like, I think that's why people fall into the trap. That's why I fell into the trap of doing the same diet 365 days a year. Cause it's like, I just want to follow this formula. And I want to look like this person that's saying they've been doing this for X amount of years. And that's all I want to do. So I'm just going to do this protocol and it is enticing and it may work in the beginning, but eventually your body kind of needs that variety, you know, um, and yeah. it needs a little bit of a change up. Uh, so yeah, it's, and it, yeah, I think that's <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that's a lot to say about that. One thing oh, from ahead, my please. perspective, right. Is organized like periodized training because I'm not, uh, not a gymnastics outdoor exerciser. I don't enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. I don't care how optimal it is. It's not what I like doing. I'd rather not right. exercise if that's the only way I can exercise, right? I like doing biceps curls. I like doing gym-based, if I could do them outside, I'd absolutely do them outside, but mm -hmm. not always practice. So like right. one of the things I'm doing right now with one of the coaches that I do like frequent consultations with is building a seasonal plan. Mm, I like that. All right, here's how we eat in the winter because this is what's available. Well, now how do you mm -hmm. train? based on the around that right? right yeah right. so like how you train in january should be way different than how you train in july yes. right great we're not gonna so one of the 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 things like uh, the, the person i was just mentioning with the diet going hand in hand with the training right it is the training is very low rest very metabolic very aerobic conditioning or aerobic energy system style training with a high fat diet because what do we know about aerobic style training it consumes a bit more fat than it does carbohydrates. High mm. intensity training consumes more carbohydrates as fuel. So mm. when we're eating lots of carbohydrates, when carbs are in season, if we're eating seasonally, then that's when we're going to train more higher, harder intensities, more volumes where we need more carbohydrates to help recover and grow from training. 
not going to do that in the wintertime. So that, that sort of builds in your style. And if you're doing that inside, if you're doing it outside, whatever, right. Take that for what you want to take it for, but it, it builds in different types of diets and different styles of diets. And I'm going to eat more fat now, and I'm going to try to eat more animal fat. Or I'm going to eat more right. carbohydrate meals. I'm going to cycle carbs in more often because we, we get into these ruts of where all of your fitness information comes from, you know, juiced up bodybuilders or all right. of your, or all of your carnivore information comes from a, a, a juiced up fit fluencer. That's only eating right. carnivore. Like right. you look back in the history of physical culture, there are, you know, success leaves clues and there's lots of yes people have been very successful in very different ways, mm -hmm. but you can learn from that. You can look back to move forward. It's like my whole thing with learning the history of weightlifting because a lot of the pre-steroid physical culture bodybuilding stuff is where most of the magic is. Mm -hmm. Those guys didn't have copious amounts of carbohydrates every single day. No. Because they couldn't, they couldn't lean out that way. Now they had mm -hmm. some carbohydrates. They had, you know, organic rolled oats. Maybe they had a banana in a, in a milk-based protein shake smoothie before there was protein powder, right? Or whatever. So the, like, those are the people you really want to draw your influence from in terms of all this stuff, because all that stuff has stood the test of time. You know, like one of, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite influencers, I guess, from body, from pre-steroid bodybuilding started competing in the forties. Uh, yeah. Late forties and was a, a, a physical culture giant until he passed away in the nineties. Mm. You know, like this guy had a gym from the forties to the nineties. Let that sink in for a second. And he yeah. turned <laughs> massive amounts of movie stars and bodybuilders and advised bodybuilders, advised aren't people like Arnold and all these guys. Like those are the guys you want to learn from. How did they do what they did? And what yeah. you'll notice is those kind of guys trained a very certain, very specific way. And that jived with their personality, their not so much their body type, but their brain chemistry. It jived with how they, the diet that worked for them and people who trained differently utilized different diets. So you can start to make all those things work for you. You know, if you can only yeah. train 20 minutes a day, uh, you might not want to train pedal to the metal like Charles Poliquin recommended. You may want right. to train like that worked for somebody else, you know? So yeah. there's, there's lots of ways to accomplish these goals, but that just requires you to open your mind and start to like the, the Bruce Lee thing, which I'm sure I've said on every episode of everything, you know, we've ever done together. And I probably say it on every episode of everything I ever do as you absorb what is useful and take in, you know, what is useful to you and get rid of what is not useful to you. And then you have something uniquely your own. And that's what the, the best guys have done. That's what uh, Vince Gironda did. That's what Charles Poliquin did. That's what all of these most successful people did mm. who had, you know, who bred successful students from all yeah. walks. Of life. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's important. I think that's a great takeaway for people and um, something to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about um, people hopefully hearing this information and maybe taking a little step back and reevaluating some things, especially we're, you know, end of the year here, this will come out the, you know, first week of December, first full week of December. And so on that note, um, Rob and I, we did an amazing exercise course. If that's something that you are feeling called to, to do, I would encourage you to, it's 30% off this month. It won't be this low again. Um, and I know Rob, you've got some really great offerings as well. You've got a membership group that you've started since our course. And I'll make sure I link that. If you want to talk about that for a minute, anything else you want to, to let people know about? Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll plug the membership site. Cause I think it's, I mean, I, I put a lot of work it's into it. So we have, uh, yeah. so it's a monthly thing, like all the memberships are, but we do, or I'll release one video every week. So you get, you know, between 30 and 45 minutes, or gosh, I think the first video was 90 minutes um, mm. on, on training. And then we do a nutritional component and then a circadian slash biohacking slash red light slash cold, right. All, all that stuff has its mm -hmm. own, uh, a month. And then the last one is a, a Q and A's, you know, like we did when we had our course, submit all your questions from anything, clarify all the previous uh, lectures. So it's, it's very thorough. You know, you're getting over uh, several hours of video content 
uh, each month for a very, very small fraction of what you would pay to do that one on one. So I think it's a great value. So we'll have that linked in here. And uh, yep. if you have any questions on that, just reach out and I'll try to explain the best I can. Awesome. Yeah. And I will make sure our course is linked and your membership group. And uh, I'm sure we'll have more chats down the road. Eventually, we're going to do a, like a another seminar on um, nutrition together. It's just been a lot of stuff going on in my <laughs> personal life over the last few months. So I haven't been able to do a lot of new creation, but definitely have some collabs coming up in 2024. So everybody stay tuned and uh, sure we'll chat again soon. Thank you so much for being here, Rob. Always a pleasure. Thanks again for having me. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Rob Jacobs. As a reminder, all of his information, his group, our exercise course, his website, everything will be down in the show notes for you. So if you want to check that out, please do. And if you want to get our exercise course, again, during the month of December, very limited time, we're going to offer this for 30% off. If you are looking for a plan to help get you started now, don't wait until January, do it now. This is a really, really great program. So check that out. And thank you again to my two sponsors, Viva Rays, as well as Upgraded Formulas. And if you are listening on the podcast, please head on over to Apple or Spotify, leave the show up to a five-star review and YouTube. All you have to do is just hit that like button and leave us a comment, a kind one, please. <laughs> All right. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. As always, I look forward to speaking with you again next week. We'll talk soon.